there are different things that narrators need to consider depending on the project that they're doing and the, the genre that it's in and the age level that it's that it's aimed for. Um, uh, I've done some children's books, I've done some comedy, I've done some business. What would you all say are the things to keep in mind when narrating a children's book, especially a young children's book? I So there are a couple of aspects to that. I would say um, that for, for me, uh, my idea when I'm narrating a children's book is to not patronize them. <laughs> and, and by that, I mean, I, I don't get a, I don't adopt a tone that is too over the top. Um, and and uh, kind of like a, like a, um, some of the, some of the early education cartoons use that, that I try to avoid that kind of thing. Um, uh, you know, not, um, and I, I try to, to treat them like I was read to as a child, you know, I want to, I want to bring them into the story. I want to pull them into the story. Um, and I don't, um, I think that that's, that's the best way to engage them is to, is to get that tone of the, the sort of traditional storyteller, um, and to use words in the descriptions in the audio description portion that are age appropriate. Um, and if they're not, and if we have to use another word, then try to at least give a very short explanation as to what that what we're talking about. Yes. Um, uh, excellent point, Chris, because it's more what you shouldn't do with children's books. Uh, mm -hmm. There is that once upon a time, uh, there was a story about, you know, and it just like, uh, yeah. You nuts. <laughs> yeah, when I was, I did a, I did a, 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 an animated show for very young children. Um, I was cast as, as a new character and, uh, they, the director kept asking me to be more, of a certain style and I'll, I'll do just a tiny bit. It, it was like, I read special books for them. It's called Braille. The Braille is a, is a type of, what, 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 I can't remember the line exactly, but it was like, you have to read just like this. And I, I couldn't say to the director, you know, this is extremely patronizing, but <laughs> you know, you, cause you're paid and you do your job and you move on. But oof, that was hard. Uh, Michael, Trenton, what about you? Yeah, I'd like I mean, to add I'm, a little bit to that. Go, uh, is, oh, go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say that, echo what Chris said, I think that the biggest challenge for me when I've read um, children's books is making sure that you're not, you're not speaking down to them. But you also, I mean, all of us as, as narrators, the thing that we always keep in mind is who we're talking to. So we do visualize that. I do a lot of nonfiction work, so I'm always trying to make sure that I'm visualizing a person that I'm speaking to. Um, in most cases, um, there's other cases where you think that you're speaking to a group of people, but most of the work that I do, I try to, I find that it helps me if I can visualize a person that I'm speaking to. And then when you do character work, when I do fiction work, I typically think of somebody I know for the character so that I could just think of that person and that will help me get into character. With children's books, it's a little bit different because you, you, you know, we have four children. So, you know, I can always reference how I would read to my kids. And I feel that, and maybe you guys who've done more um, children books will will either agree or disagree with this, but I think that the children are, what, what keeps them in the story are the characters. So you have to make sure that those characters are vibrant and powerful enough from an imagery point of view that they're, that they're keeping them interested. So on the one hand, you don't want to be, you know, patronizing to them from a narrator point of view. But on the other hand, from a character point of view, you got to make sure that you really imbue that character with enough life that they're going to, because that's what they're excited about is in most cases that they're excited about. So it's, it is reading to children is its own specific challenge that I think that people don't tend to think about who don't do this for a living, but it is challenging. I love the idea of the audience of one that I do the same. And of course, for me, 
I'm back there with my daughter again. It's bedtime and I'm reading to her. And it's just, it makes children's material even the more magical when I narrate them. But I wanted to add also, because we're actors and I did do acting lessons and do some plays and things to try to be the character. So Piglet's small. He's very nervous about things. His world is a little bit different from his perspective. So you want to bring a genuine character, but also there's a little bit of a guardrail there because there are times when Piglet is distressed and he's really close to tears because he thinks he's ruined Eeyore's birthday and he's so sad. And you want to make the kids feel that sadness without them running off crying to mommy that the book got all really sad. So you do it in a certain way where it's a little bit of a wink and, and the child still feels like they're in that moment without getting overwhelmed with emotions because they're still young and they're processing their feelings.